Good afternoon. We welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, Rejoice Sunday. All visitors and newcomers are urged to fill out our welcome envelope found in your pew. Please place your completed envelope in today's collection basket. God's holy word calls us to rejoice in the Lord always. Today's second collection is for our Cathedral Basilica School. Kindly be generous in helping to support Catholic education in our parish. In your pews are memorial Christmas flower offering envelopes through which you can prayerfully remember your living and deceased loved ones throughout the Christmas season. The names of your beloved living and deceased loved ones will be placed at our altar and prayerfully remembered during all Christmas season masses. As we prepare for today's celebration, all are urged to fully participate in mass by singing from our hymnal. Kindly also introduce yourself to the people seated around you, especially sharing your name with those you've never met. Please stand and join me in singing our Advent Gathering Hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let's welcome in our midst Father Jason. <clears throat> he is from India, and he is a CMI, Carmelites of Mary, of Mary Immaculate. Immaculate. So he will be with us. He will be staying at the rectory and his apostolate is at the nursing home, taking good care of the sick. Father Jason, welcome. Thank you. Uh, friends, uh, good morning. Good morning. Now that we have come around the table of the Lord on this third Sunday of the Advent, let us take a moment to repent, repent on all our sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.
O God, who see how your people faithfully wait for the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We shall now light the third candle, signifying the third Sunday of Advent. May I ask you all to join me in blessing the Kramer family as they light the Christmas red candle. God, the Father Almighty, in a very special way, we place this family at your feet. Lord, as they light the Christmas candle, help them to always stay in your light and enjoy your light and spread your light in their life situations. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none. And whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice exhortation. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. I will baptize you. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord.
Let us be joyful disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, good morning. And welcome to our celebration, the Gaudete Sunday, a joyful Sunday for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So may I now call our visitors so that we can welcome them into our historic basilica. Okay, welcome. Today is Gaudete Sunday. That's why, as you can see in our Advent wreath, no, the one lighted up for this Sunday is a different color candle. We have four candles there. Three are violet and one pink. And today, you know, we light up the pink candle. Why? Because we are waiting for the coming of the Messiah, but in a joyful manner, joyful celebration. And so, may our hearts be filled with joy. We have to clean our heart and allow that joy will live in our heart and will grow and radiate that joy to others. That joy must not only remain in us, but we have to radiate that to other people because we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? In our readings for the day, as well as the gospel, they talk about what and how to be joyful. In the first reading, Zephaniah reminds the people, Shout with joy, daughter of Zion. Sing joyfully, daughter of Israel. No? And at the end part, no? he told the people, Fear not, the Lord is in your midst. My brothers and sisters, we have to examine our heart. No? And sometimes there are so many things there that rob us of joy. No? And one of them is fear. So let go of fear. And how to let go of fear is always be assured that the Lord is in our midst. Fear paralyzes us. Fear will rob us of joy. What are your fears? Look at your heart. Examine your life. What are your fears? Maybe fear of getting sick. Maybe fear of getting abandoned. Maybe fear of losing a loved one. Or fear on how to survive. But don't stop only in fear. But make an act of surrender to the Lord. The Lord is in your midst. And that is the message of the prophet Zephaniah. Never be afraid. Never let fear be in your heart, but the Lord is in our midst. The Lord is in our life. We have the Lord, so there is no room for fear to paralyze us. Amen? In the second reading, Paul also exhorts with the community of the Philippians. You know, there are so many communities during the time, the time of Paul. But you know, this community, the Philippians, is very close to his heart. But one thing that Paul observed in the Philippian community is that they are full of anxieties. And that's why Paul told them that never allow anxiety to let in your life. No? Paul, in the community of the Philippians, he says to them, no? Make an act of surrender in prayer and thanksgiving and open your heart to God. Open your petitions to Him. No? And then, he said at the last part, God will be 
with you. He is with you. And He will give you inner peace. Maybe in our life, we have so many anxieties. We are so anxious. We are so worried. And you know what? You cannot be happy if you are anxious, if you are worried. No? In the state of anxiety and worry, you are like no, sitting in a rocking chair. No? Sitting and sitting all the day long, doing nothing. But at the end of the day, you will be tipsy, even if you are not drunk. Do you like that? No? That is worry and anxiety. What are your worries? What are your anxieties? No? We can also relate to the community of the Philippians. St. Paul told them, no? make your petitions known to the Lord in prayer and always thank Him. And in doing that, we will have inner peace. What is joy? How to be happy? We have to let go of those anxieties, of those worries, and pray to God, and we will have inner peace. That is what we desire, inner peace. We will be like a lotus, no? Even no, below, full of mud, full of filth, but it rises beyond the murky water, and it goes on even if there are waves. Why? Because we have inner peace. And that is joy for St. Paul. And that is how to be joyful disciples of the Lord, no? to have inner peace. Let go of your anxieties. Let go of all the things that trouble you, your worries, in prayer, in making known your petitions to God. In the Gospel for the day, many people ask St. John the Baptist, what should we do? There are three groups of people. The first was the crowd. What we should do? And then St. John the Baptist told them, for those who have two cloaks, share to those who have none. And for those who have food, must do likewise. It is reminding us that we have to share. And in sharing, there is joy. That's why we believe it is better to give than to receive. Because in one thing or another, my brothers and sisters, there is joy in giving, in being selfless. No? So be selfless. Be generous. And if you are generous, you cannot but smile and be happy. That's why maybe you experience it. When you give something, you will experience joy. Amen? That's it. The beauty of giving. The beauty of sharing. The second people who ask St. John the Baptist what we should do were the tax collectors, the publicans. You know, they repented. And they asked St. John the Baptist, what are we going to do? And then St. John the Baptist told them, stop collecting taxes of what is prescribed. Because they are collecting more taxes than what is prescribed. Why? Before, they were very materialistic. Materialism. Money was their God. And so, St. Nabagos reminded them no, that money, being materialistic, cannot give them true happiness. You know, we need money. But, we must not be attached to our money. We must not be materialistic. Why? Because if we are attached to our wealth, to money, we are like drinking the salt water in, you know, 
quenching our thirst. But at the end, the salt water cannot quench our thirst because it is only the fresh water. Salt water is like being materialistic, materialism. The more that we do it, it cannot satisfy us. And at the end, we will die. We will die miserably. We cannot be happy. So, be detached no? to your material possessions and make sure that you do things to share of what you have. The third people who ask St. John the Baptist, what should we do? No? They were the soldiers. And then, St. John the Baptist told them, stop extortion. No? Don't practice extortion. No? And don't uh, bear false witness to other people. What is that? No? They are the people who abuse other people. They found pleasure in abusing others, especially the least, the last, and the lost. So we have to be just. We have to be loving to other people. We have to see Jesus to the other. And in doing that, no, we will not abuse anyone. And in being just, in being loving, we can be happy. Amen? At the end part of the Gospel, St. John the Baptist told them, I am not the Messiah. There is somebody who is to come. And he will baptize in fire and in the Holy Spirit. And that is Jesus. My hey, brothers and sisters, we cannot give what we don't have. So who is the source of our joy? It is Jesus. Jesus will always be the source of our joy, the source of our dynamism, the source of giving, of you know, be able to share, the source that we can be able to defeat fear, defeat anxieties, defeat of being materialistic. May Jesus be with us. And if Jesus is with us, we will experience the beauty of joy and reject this joy to other people. That's why Pope Francis reminds us that there are no unhappy or sad disciples of the Lord because we have a God who is a God of joy. We have Jesus who is joyful. So may you be serene, may you be happy, even you, know, you are experiencing difficulties because we have Jesus. So whenever you have big problems, you say to yourself, you're just big problem. But I have a big God who is Jesus. And with Jesus, I can overcome you. In doing that for sure, my brothers and sisters, we will be joyful followers, joyful disciples of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, may I ask those of you who have brought uh, the little images of baby Jesus from your cribs to be blessed.
bring them to the friend for a special blessing. Images of a baby Jesus. May I request you all uh, in, to join me in blessing and these uh, little uh, images of baby Jesus. God, our Father, you so loved us that you sent as our, your only begotten Son, Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, to save us from sin and to lead us back to you. We pray that with your blessing, these images of Jesus who has come to us in human flesh on the first Christmas and every day and shall come in glory at the end of time may be a sign of your presence and love in our homes. Good Father, give your blessing to us too, to our parents, to our families and to our friends. In your mercy, open our hearts so that we may be able to receive Jesus in joy of heart, always do what he asks us to do, and to see him in all those who stand in need of our love and care. We ask you this in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son, who comes to give our world peace. He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Almighty Father, you are our sustainer and provider now we raise all our needs and wants to you in prayers. Christians and all God's people. Lift up our church this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. For struggling families, the sick, suffering, poor, elderly, and unemployed, for the reverence of all human life, and the defense of religious liberty. Lift up, O oh church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. For vocations and true biblical stewardship. For all who have died, especially Margaret, and for all who grieve. Lift up, O oh church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. For travelers, for our troops, and for the intentions of our hearts. Lift up, O oh church, this world to God. Loving Father, grant us these, our prayers, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now invite
invite our children to bring their gifts for Jesus and place them in the basket at the foot of the altar. Also, please join me in singing hymn number 333. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope and so with angels and archangels with the thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of a charity together with Francis our Pope and Curtis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins. Look on the faith of your church and graciously grant us all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be peace, peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in the state of grace come to Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over heart to pray with the priest for the unity of all God's people. Please join me in singing hymn number 839.
We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Margaret Harris, her family, and for the comfort of all those who grieve. Our children are highly encouraged to sign up today at our baptismal font to join in our children's Christmas procession at our 3 p.m. Mass on Christmas. Our youth group will have beautiful religious articles on our plaza after Mass. Please support our youth group by giving religious uh, Christmas gifts. Also on our plaza after Mass, our Cathedral School has raffle tickets available for a brand new 2019 Chevrolet Cruze. Tickets are $5 each or five for 20. The raffle drawing will be during our school's annual Mardi Gras Gala on March 2nd. Please sign up at our baptismal font today to help decorate our beautiful Cathedral Basilica for Christmas this coming Thursday from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Our complete Christmas season schedule is in today's bulletin. Please be sure to pick up a bulletin after Mass. And before uh, leaving, as good stewards of this sacred place, kindly tidy up your pew for our next Mass. Thank you. May I ask those of you who intend to travel this week and the visitors to stand up for a special blessing. Almighty and ever loving Father, we thank you for these brothers and sisters of ours. Be their guide, Lord, on their travels. Protect them for all their from all dangers. Help them to arrive at their destination safely. Fill them with joy and confidence. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.